Welcome back guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. In the last video, uh, we installed the PAP WinLink client and got the basic configuration done. So today we want to take a minute and see if we can't get rig control installed as well. So the first thing you're going to do is come over to this web page and I'll leave a link for that down below. Um, the first thing we need to do is get the uh, Hamlib uh, library installed. So we're going to copy this command here and going back to our terminal window we will paste that in. And give that just a second and tell it yes we want to install it and that will get the libraries that we need installed. All right, now that that is installed, let's go ahead and clear the screen. And we're going to issue the command rigctl-l. And what that's going to do is give us a list of all the possible radios that are in the uh, library that we can use. Now, I'm running a Yaesu 857, so we're going to scroll back up through here until we find the Yaesu 857, which is here. And what we're looking for is this first number right here, this 122. That's the information that we need, so we'll note that. Okay, now that we've got uh, the libraries installed, we need to go into the PAT configure file and make a few modifications in there. All right, we're going to come down to this line here where it says hamlib underscore rigs and we'll just move that down a couple of lines get it out of our way and we'll type in this information here now the first line that I'm typing in is actually what I'm naming the radio we'll follow that up by a colon and then a curly bracket address Oop, missed the quotation address Another colon, localhost, and this is the port of our radio, 4532, and then the network that we want to use is going to be TCP. And we'll close that with another curly bracket. Okay, so this is what we're naming uh, the radio here, and that's the critical part uh, that we need later down uh, later down in the configuration file. Uh, and then we have this information here telling it the the uh, port that we want to use and the type of network protocol that we want to use. So coming on down, uh, AX25 is what you will use for packet work. So right here under rig, we want to tell it that we want to use the 857D and that matches what we put in right here. Okay, and then we will also be configuring RDOP later on. So we want to come down to the RDOP section and you'll see RDOP right here. We'll come down to the rig and we'll also tell it that we want that to use the 857D. And that's the end of the configuration. Uh, the rest of it uh, is done in the command line. So we'll go ahead and exit out of that by using Control X, uh, Y to tell it, yes, we want to save it, and Enter to write that back. Now, to get the rig control working, we're going to issue this command here. That's uh, rig ctld-m122-r forward slash dev forward slash tty usb zero. Uh, and that's the USB uh, connection that our radio uh, is connected to. So we got a cable that runs between the CAT connection of the radio and a USB port on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, typically that should be correct. After the USB 0 we want to tell it dash S and then the last is 4800 which is our baud rate. Okay, now that I've started rig control and I've uh, started PAT uh, Windlink client, I'm back in the PAT mailbox. And down here in the terminal window, you can see 
that it says that the 857D is ready and it tells me what my dial frequency is set to currently. Uh, and then it tells me that it started the HTTP service and uh, Pat uh, is ready to go. So now we have rig control uh, installed and working and the next thing we'll need to get running uh, is our RDOP service. So stay tuned for the next video and we'll get RDOP installed next. Be sure to give us a thumbs up, leave any uh, questions you got in the comments. We'll answer those the best we can. Until the next video, see you guys.